Okay, we're now ready to go through the process of core validation. There's multiple ways to conduct a core validation. Uh, the ideal way is to actually mark the core location right behind the final roller on the day of paving operation. The second way which we employed on this project is to actually collect the core validation location the following morning right before they cut the core in the morning. So what you see here is a location that's already been shot for dielectric and poured to get the actual air void content of the, the mat core itself. What we're going to show you now or next is the third uh, way to do this, which is if there's already a core taken at that location, moving either longitudinally prior to the core location or longitudinally after the core location to get a representative dielectric that's close to your uh, location where the core was actually taken. This is not ideal because if there's any variation in your air void content, this actual measurement won't be representative, but it's the best we can do uh, for this case. And in, in this case, we actually already did get the dielectric in the actual core location. So the next step will walk you through the core validation process, which will be the same whether you employ any of these three um, strategies in that it's going to be time collect mode and distance collect mode at the spot check that you choose to do your measurement at. We're now going to go through the process of setting it up for core validation mode. So the first thing Nick is doing is putting the correct station number of the core location. The next thing he'll do is switch from field measurement to core. And at this point, he can go in and give the actual eight foot offset of the core location. And we're ready to go after pressing include with field measurements, we're ready to go into collect. Okay, now that we're into core mode, Nick is going to select the appropriate measurement method. And it doesn't matter which one you start with as long as you keep it consistent. So Nick's going to choose time because he did time measurements first when he did those measurements at 4.30 this morning. So now Nick's going to walk the cart up to the first core location which is 27.2. And as soon as that green dot hits the outs or hits the center of the core location, he's a little bit off to the right, so he's gonna adjust the cart to get it at the center of the core location. And now he's got the green dot there. And he's ready to go into his software now and actually press core ID and enter 27.2. And I'd like actually, Nick, to put something in the core ID that you normally wouldn't put to indicate that this is actually our offset location. So I'm going to have Nick put 9.9 um, nine, nine at the end of this measurement. And that's just to indicate that this is a slightly different measurement than the one we actually want to use, which he collected prior to coring this morning. So go ahead and do the measurement, Nick. And he did that by selecting sensor 312 because that's the one that was located over the core location. So we have a live output here, a dielectric of 92.47 at or 0.49 at this location. It says dielectric here because typically you'd be in dielectric mode, but we've already input our mix calibration for the mix that was placed here uh, yesterday. So that's actually the percent GMM of 92.49. Nick's now ready to do the measurement on the companion core location, which for MnDOT is just a foot forward longitudinally. And once that's centered, going to press uh, left again.
and once that's complete we get a live output here and we have very close measurement which is good news because typically longitudinally you shouldn't have too much variation and that's the thought process behind why MnDOT does companion cores to check the contractor cores with the agency cores at a similar location. So this core right here should be, when, it, when we get the results back, somewhere around 92.5% uh, air voids. And this is what we do to validate that our calibration is in fact correct. So now Nick is going to bring us into distance mode after saving the time collect mode. He's putting in the correct station number, similar to last time, and now going to collect. And here he's also going to do sensor 312, but now we're in distance mode. Uh, and actually Nick is going to put 27.299. Now once the sensor is back to the beginning position, in this case we want to be three inches prior to the core location and this is going to get us a six inch diameter measurement where we're doing high frequency measurements. It's still triggered by the DMI, but it's getting much more high frequency measurements than what we would normally get on our field collect. And this is designed to give us a really highly accurate validation location measurement. So go ahead and press left to indicate that we're doing the measurement with our left sensor and he's going to slowly move it up until it's finished and he got the beep indicating a density of 92.43 and now we're ready to move to the companion location up a little bit more next stop and he's ready to do his companion core moving slowly and it's done so by all indications, we're looking at about a 92.5% uh, GMB compaction result at this core location. We'll be able to check that with the results we get later this morning from this core number 27.2. Okay, now that we've finished our core validation measurements, this is a unique case where the cores have actually already been taken. So we actually called back to the lab and got the results of 91.6% compaction. And those values corresponded to the agency, or actually the co contractor core at 27.2. So we're gonna go back and review our results to see how they compare. So you just keep pressing back if you're in the collection mode until you get to the main screen where you can go into playback mode. And once you're into playback mode, you can go to playback file. And to get to our core measurements, we actually go into project info, core measurements. And here you see it's nicely saved at a table here where we have our three di different 97.2 cores, first two at time collect mode, second two at distance collect mode, all hovering around 92.5. So 92.5, 92.4, 92.4, and 92.7. Uh, so in this case, if we now look at the locations, we can say that our validation locations located here further away from the actual core locations at least told us we're in the ballpark. So we're at about uh, a predicted 92.5% uh, compaction here and our validated actual core measurements there uh, corresponded to 91.6% voids. And typically for companion cores anyway, we accept plus or minus about a percent air voids. So we're within the precision of the measurement itself here. So we're pretty happy with our core calibration then.